Welcome back, this is episode number 4 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. From this tutorial and going forward, you are going to learn how to use and program the GPIOs of your Raspberry Pi board. The GPIO pins are a great way to make your Raspberry Pi control simple hardware components like LEDs and push buttons. And to be able to create a hardware circuit with Raspberry Pi, you have to know just a bit about breadboards and resistors. That's what I will explain right now. First of all, let's see how to use a breadboard. A breadboard is very useful for prototyping and to start your own first project. You will use it to connect multiple components together and with your Raspberry Pi GPIOs. You can plug some wires, resistors, LEDs, well, anything you want on a breadboard. What you need to know is that underneath the surface, there are some metal lines that make connections between components. So a component that you plug on a line is gonna be electrically connected to all the other components on this line. And here I'm gonna start with this representation of a breadboard. So the connections are gonna look like this, usually on top. So if you orientate the breadboard like this, you have two lines, okay? Uh, it's minus and plus. So usually minus, we're gonna use that for the ground, also named G and D, and the plus we're gonna use that for power or also VCC. And what you can see is that all the dots here are actually connected between each other. Okay, so this dot is connecting with that one and it's connected with that one. So all the dots together. And the same thing for the plus lines, okay? So those are two different lines. They are not connected between each other. Okay, the minus and the plus, but within one line, all the dots are connected together. So you have this at the top. You might also have this at the bottom if you see another plus and minus line like this. So those, we will use them for ground and power. And then you have a lot of other dots in the middle here. And as you can see, those are not connected here horizontally, but they are connected vertically, okay? So you can see here, for example, we have those five dots are connected together. So if you put a component here, so one side of a component here, and one side of a component in that one here, they are connected together. But if you put them on a different uh, column here, they will not be connected together. Okay, so that's basically how a breadboard works. You have two big lines here at the top, at the bottom as well, and then you have columns here. Those dots are connected in columns. And before I go to the real breadboard here, you can see I have uh, two images. Okay, so here is what a breadboard might look like. So you might have something like this. Maybe you have a small version. Okay, that's basically only half of this. Maybe you have a long one. So you can see here, we have numbers of columns between zero here and 60 something. So the size of the breadboard here doesn't matter. You might have only half one or a large one. It doesn't matter. What I wanted to show you here is that, so at the bottom here is the one that I'm gonna be using. And you can see we have the plus line here that's continuous and the minus line here. But I know that some of you might have a breadboard like that. And you can see there's a big difference is that uh, the plus and the minus line here are actually cut in the middle. So all those dots here are connected, for example, on the plus line, but those dots are not connected with that other side of the breadboard. So in this case, what you might need to do is to uh, connect just a wire between, for example, that dot here and that dot here so that you make the whole line connected. You can connect one small wire, for example, a red wire between the two plus sides and a small black wire between the two minus sides. So you can do this now, you can do it later. I'm gonna come back to this and I'm gonna uh, point that when we actually need to do it in the circuit, okay? So don't worry too much about this, but just note that if you have a disconnection here, you will just need to do an extra step with some parts of the circuit. If you have something like this, well, you don't need to worry at all. And so here is uh, my breadboard. So here's the breadboard I will be using for this course. So it's exactly the same as on the image. And you can see here we have the uh, plus line. So I have a plus line at, at the top and then a minus line. Okay, so all the dots here are horizontally connected on the plus line and all the dots are also horizontally connected on the minus line. And then we have 60 plus something colon here. Okay, and all the dots. So for example, on the colon number 60, 
you can see I have one, two, three, four, five dots. Those five dots are connected together, but are completely independent from all the other column that I have here. Okay, and I have this here at the top and also at the bottom. So you can see it's kind of a here. This line in the middle is a symmetry line for the breadboard, and that's basically all there is to it for the breadboard. The most important thing is to know which dot is connected to which. After that, you can do everything you want. The first circuit we will do contains an LED and we will make this LED blink. Okay, and to make an LED blink, we will need an LED, some wires, but also one resistor. The resistor is here to lower the amount of current that goes through the LED and it's also helping to protect the GPIOs so they don't get burnt with too much current. And for this course, we will use one kilo ohm resistors. It's a very standard value, and I'm not gonna give much details about this uh, value, but if you want to know more about that, you can also find many resources on the internet. So now that you know what resistor we want to use, then how to know which resistor to pick from the resistor set that you have. So maybe the resistors are correctly set per value in the kit you have, but if it's not the case, you will have to read the value from the color and here is a table to help you find the value of a resistor with the colors on the resistor. Usually you will have either four bands or five bands resistor. And here the first band, the second band, and optionally the third band correspond to a number. The next one corresponds to a multiplier. And finally, the last band is for the tolerance or the precision of the resistor. And for what we will do in this course, you don't really need to worry about the tolerance, okay, any value will do. Usually you will have here plus minus 5% or plus minus 10%. Here we don't really need to care about the precise value for the resistors. And here's the example with the resistor we're gonna use, so the one kilo ohm resistor. If you have a four band resistor, so that's the one on the top here, you see that the first two bands are gonna represent a number. So here one zero, that's 10. And the third band is gonna be here the multiplier. So to get 1000, you need to multiply 10 by 100, so that's why you have brown, black, and red. And then you have the tolerance, which can be any color, it doesn't matter. If you have a five band resistor, like the one I will show you just in a minute, then we will have one, zero, and zero, so brown, black, and black, those are the first, second, and third band. And then the multiplier is going to be only 10, okay, because we multiply 100 by 10 to have 1000. So in this case, you have brown, black, black, and brown plus the tolerance okay and if you are confused about well what side to read the resistor from usually all the colors are uh, you can see close so you have one band here at each extremity but most of the bands will be close to that first value here so where you have more space here it corresponds to the tolerance that's how you can correctly read the value so here is the resistor that i'm going to be using Okay, so you can see, I can read it uh, here. There is, a, so I have five bands. I have brown, black, black, brown, and then another color for the tolerance that I don't really care about. Okay, so if you can see here, that's the resistance I'm gonna use. If you have a five band resistor, it should look like this. And then if you have a four band, well, you just have brown, black, and red. Coming back to the color code here, if you don't have one kilo ohm, don't worry too much, you can also use 330 or 470 ohm resistors. So I'm getting those values because they are very common values as well. And if you have 330, for example, you can see that we first need three and three. So the first two bands should be orange, okay? And then depends on if it's a four band or five band, the rest is gonna be different, but you should start with orange and orange. And if you have a 470 ohm, the first two numbers are four and seven. So the first two bands should be yellow and uh, violet here, purple. All right, so that's how you can find a resistor's value. It's quite easy. Once you've done this once or twice, it's very easy to find. And I would just uh, recommend one thing is not going below 330 ohm for the LEDs, okay? One kilo ohm is in fact a pretty high value for an LED with the Raspberry Pi, but it's a nice value if you want to connect many LEDs. So the total current consumption will not be too high and will not go beyond the Raspberry Pi's limit, which is 50 milliamp. So to connect components such as LEDs, the higher the resistor's value, the less current you will take. And thus you can plug more LEDs and components to your circuit 
while keeping it safe. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.